This is one of hundreds of schools that the Puerto Rican government has shut down. And I actually recognize some areas because of the pictures I've been looking at. But these schools have now been abandoned for three years, in some cases even longer. And now there's a sort of struggle going on over who gets to keep these structures, because some of these are really good real estate. So the question is, who deserves to own these spaces? This story starts with La Junta. That's the board of members who were not elected by the Puerto Rican people, but instead appointed by the U.S. government. And they oversee and approve the island's finances. Some call it colonial, some say it was necessary after the Puerto Rican government accrued billions of dollars in debt it couldn't pay back. But wherever you stand on that, what was clear from the beginning was that La Junta was going to demand cuts, and that cuts to public funds were going to affect everyday Puerto Ricans. That's how this goes back to the abandoned schools. La Junta ordered cuts to education, and Julia Kelleher, who was the Secretary of Education at the time, along with then-Governor Ricardo Rosselló, ordered hundreds of schools to shut down. Please, don't close it. Parents and students protested to try to keep their schools open. <laughs> But they couldn't stop it, and between 2017 and 2018, more than 400 schools were closed in the name of saving money. Teachers were mad because at the same time, the Department of Education was spending money on things like hiring a company for $16 million to teach students values. To add insult to injury, Kelleher would later be arrested for allegedly steering millions of dollars of federal money to politically connected consultants. The FBI also accuses her of offering more than a thousand square feet of a school to a real estate company in exchange for living in a luxury apartment for one dollar. And get this, in 2019, La Junta said the school closures didn't generate the expected savings. But the damage to the communities that lost their schools was already done. And as you saw, some of those schools have become eyesores, full of mold and pests. But some have seen opportunity in them. In the town of Lares, for example, there are people living in an abandoned school because Hurricane Maria destroyed their homes. In another neighborhood, they're turning a school into a community center and just recently installed solar panels. This is the moment they found out it worked. Yay! That's also what a community group in the south of Puerto Rico wants to do. We would have this school with energy solar. We would have a center of acopio that would include alimentos, articles of first need. So, prepare for subsisting in what can be the external help. She's talking about the next natural disaster. Guanica was one of the hardest hit towns when a 6.4 magnitude earthquake hit Puerto Rico. Some people are still sleeping in tents because the tremors haven't stopped and their homes are not safe. In Guanica, in oh, muchísima, 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 muchísima. Guanica está mal, mal, mal. The community of Arenas lost their school back in 2014. They also fought to try to keep it open. Fue muy triste, fue muy triste porque eh, la facultad era una facultad muy comprometida con, con la educación. La comunidad en general er, fueron bien serviciales. Y uno añora eh, eso, esos años de, de alegría porque aunque er, somos una comunidad económicamente desventajado, pero emocionalmente somos ricos. Six years later, this group has big plans for it. Queremos hacer un gimnasio, queremos hacer un centro para la tercera edad, para la edad dorada. Queremos un centro de cómputo porque aquí no hay señal de internet adecuada. Queremos hacer un dispensario médico, un centro de emergencia para la comunidad que va a tener todo tipo de recursos y materiales 
eh, y equipo de rescate, camillas, tanques de oxígeno, nevera solar para refrigerar la insulina y otros medicamentos si hiciera falta. But they've been trying to get ownership of the school since March and the government hasn't approved it yet. ¿Por qué no podrían decir hoy mismo que la escuela es de nosotros y nos tienen en las idas y venidas desde marzo pasado haciendo los trámites, sabiendo por las emergencias por las que estamos pasando y lo urgente que sería construir un centro de emergencia aquí, ¿verdad? Ustedes ofrecían cuido gratuito. Sí. Joana Agosto heads an educational nonprofit. And she says she planned to bring classes for kids as well as free after school care and tutoring. She requested this school in San Juan and it was approved by the legislature and signed by the governor. But then she was called into a meeting to be informed that she wouldn't be getting the school. It was instead sold for $370,000 to Caribbean cinemas, a movie theater chain. The government agency in charge of deciding who gets to keep the school said they went with the company because Joanne's nonprofit couldn't afford to pay that same amount. Caribbean cinemas will use it to expand the facility they have next door, and the government agency told me that will help stimulate the economy of the area. And a similar thing happened to another nonprofit called the International Book Fair of Puerto Rico. They lost a school in San Juan to the foundation of Puerto Rico's largest bank, Banco Popular, for $1.2 million. Remember this little girl? It's her school that now belongs to the bank's foundation. Fundación Banco Popular told me they're using the school to offer vocational programs for adults as well as after-school programs for high schoolers. But in both those examples I just gave you, the government agency went with the highest bidder. And that puts groups like the one in Guanica at a disadvantage. Right now, that agency is saying that they will rent it to the group for $1 a month. But would that change if a higher bidder comes around? I asked the government agency that question, but I didn't get an answer. Nosotros queremos que se traspase la escuela y sea propiedad nuevamente de la comunidad. No le vamos a pagar un solo centavo ni al Departamento de Educación ni al gobierno de Puerto Rico que cerró estas facilidades hace seis años y las tiene abandonadas allí por algo que nos pertenece. These women are all part of the group trying to get the school, and they have a track record of showing up for their community in Guanica. During the lockdown, they give out boxes with fresh food and brought coronavirus testing to their neighborhoods for free when it was really hard to get a test. They're able to do all of this thanks to donations, and that's also how they plan to fix the school. But first, they need to legally own it. Que se trata de la vida, la vida de la gente. Ya lo vimos en María, lo hemos visto durante los temblores. Por eso es la urgencia nuestra. Alguna gente nos decía, ah, no, pero es que ustedes quieren la escuela a la mala. Pues no, no, nosotros no queremos la escuela a la mala. Nosotros lo que queremos es que se haga justicia, ¿verdad? Que se le haga justicia a esta comunidad que por décadas ha sido una comunidad marginada. Que se le haga justicia a este pueblo que por décadas ha sido un pueblo marginado también, ¿verdad? Eso es lo que nosotros queremos. I want to take a moment to thank you so much for watching and starting now I'm going to be posting regularly to this channel. So go ahead and subscribe and also leave a comment telling me what stories you want to see next. I love turning your ideas into videos so I'll talk to you in the comments and I'll see you soon.